Let's sing glory, glory. <laughs> glory, glory. Hallelujah. Since I lay my burden down, well down. Glory, glory. Hallelujah. Since I lay my burden down, oh yeah. And I don't walk the walk. Oh, that I used to. Well, since I lay my burdens down, way well on down, and I don't walk the one that I used to. Since I lay my burdens down, singing glory, glory, oh hallelujah. Well, since I lay. Burning down, well down. Glory, glory, glory. Ha, 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 hallelujah. Since I lay my burden down, and I don't sing the song. No, it don't. Oh, that I used to. Since I lay, since I lay my burden down, down. Yeah. I don't sing the song. I used to since I lay my burden down. Oh, yeah, and the glory, glory. Ha, ha, oh, hallelujah. Since I lay oh, yeah. my burden down. down. Oh, glory, glory. Oh, hallelujah. Since I lay. All right, brother, sing this with me. Here we go. Sing it since I laid my burdens down. 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 home to be with Jesus. Since I laid my burdens down. Well down, I'm going home to yeah. Be with Jesus. Since I laid my burdens down. Oh yeah, we're singing glory, glory. Hallelujah. Since I lay my burdens down, my burdens down. Glory, glory. Hallelujah. Since I lay my burdens down, lay them all down. Amen. <laughs> Encourage my soul and let us journey on for the night is dark. And I am far from home. Thanks be to God, the morning light appears. Encourage my soul and let us journey on. For the night is dark, and I am far from home. Thanks be to God, 
the morning light appear. The storm is passing over. The storm is passing over. The storm is passing over. Let's go to God in prayer before we sing our next song. Heavenly Father, just like to thank you so much for this morning to, to really bring us together as a family to really worship you and think about your son, Jesus Christ. And uh, I just lift up a few this morning. I pray, Father, for David, uh, Daniel Smith's dad, who is um, fighting, hopefully, all the progression of the disease. And I do pray that this medicine will um, work as intended, as work as the, the, the way doctor intended. And I pray that you would take care of him and his family. God, I pray, Father, also for uh, Emily and Jacob Wilhelm as they are uh, sick currently and, and at home. Uh, and uh, they're watching this um, this on YouTube. Hi, Emily and Jacob. <laughs> but um, but we are uh, just pray for them that they would uh, be healed. Um, and uh, lastly, I just pray that you would just help us to focus on you. We love you, Father. Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. All right. We'll sing It Is Well With My Soul. <laughs> when peace like a river attended my way, when sorrows might seem Billows roll, whatever my lot, thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul.
Corinthians 15. So, uh, what is important? I've been I've been thinking about this uh, the last few days, and um, I decided to make a little list of some things that are the rest of the NHL season, the NBA season, the Coachella Music Festival. The South by Southwest Music Festival, most St. Patrick's Day parades, uh, in-person classes for the rest of the year for most universities, uh, most people's spring break plans, and travel to Europe. So these these are important things. I mean, they generate hundreds of millions of dollars. I mean, they're big. So then I decided to make another list of some things that are really not important at all that we never give any thought to so toilet paper <laughs> hand sanitizer sanitary wipes and ramen noodles so <laughs> these are things that we pay no attention to yet yet there have been news stories about people literally fighting over these things this week and um so that's just the way it goes with uh, what we consider important. It's just one day to another. It changes. Uh, 1 Corinthians 15, verse 3. For, I received, for what I received, I passed on to you as of first importance, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas and then to the twelve. So this is what is most important. Um, there's a lot of competition in our lives for other, amongst other things that try to, to, to be rivals to this. And, um, and sometimes all the stuff that we think is so important gets weeded out. It, it just, God takes it away. It's just gone. And, uh, and um, and there will, there are repercussions of these things. I mean, we may all feel some sort of economic uh, hardship or because because of what's going on, uh, it will affect us. But as Christians, uh, let's take this time to reflect on uh, on Jesus, on the cross, on His resurrection, and what is really important. Let's pray. Uh, 
Lord, we're just grateful that we're able to get together this morning to put our fears in, aside and uh, and come together to encourage one another. Uh, let us uh, uh, just take this opportunity to remember uh, that that uh, that um, Jesus and and the cross are the most important things. Uh, and it takes sometimes it takes terrible things to, to, to remind us of that. And uh, we just pray we don't let this opportunity slide by and uh, and uh, we make the most of it and learn the lessons that uh, you want us to learn from this. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Good Good morning, church. My name is Greg Newby, and you can turn to Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 17 through 18, if you like, as we take up our weekly contribution. Give you a moment to turn there. It says, you may say to yourself, my power and the strength of my hands have produced this wealth for me. But remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the ability to produce wealth. So the name of this chapter here is Do Not Forget the Lord. And I think that that is definitely something that I tend to struggle with in my everyday life. You know, when times were good, the Israelites had a huge tendency to forget about God. And when times were bad, they had a when and they were in a bunch of need. They had a huge tendency to cry out to God for help. And, you know, I've read the Old Testament a few times and you, there would always be situations where God would bless them by parting the Red Sea, for instance. They seen that. And then it wasn't even a week or two later. And then they're crying out to God for something else. You know, the bitter water. God, you know, hits a rock, has Moses hit a rock, produce fresh water. But it just seems like it's real easy as I read, read that for me to sit there and be kind of a critic about that. And just say, man, these guys are ungrateful, you know, like, can't they see the good and the amazing things that God is doing? And it'd really be easy for me to sit there and just kind of be a critic about that. Well, 
the same thing can be said for us today when we decide whether or not to depend on God. None of us have made it as far as we have without walking with God. Confession for myself here. I know for me, I can get a little bit comfortable when everything is going well. I can even get proud of what I've done in my heart. So today, as we take up our weekly contribution, let's remember it's God who blesses us financially and the ability to be able to give back to him. Let's honor God this morning and the rest of the week by remembering how much he's done for us by praying. And with that, let's pray for the contribution. Father God, thank you so much uh, just for, you know, the ability, God, to allow us the means to be able to give back to you. You know, thank you so much, God, for, you know, uh, you know, just really reminding us to, to soften our hearts and really completely depending on you, God, in everything that we do. God, again, uh, you're so amazing. You're so charitable, God. You, you always give to us whenever we need it. So, God, I just pray this morning, God, as we remember, uh, you know, just the gift that you give, God, uh, just really pray that we can definitely remember all the good things as we give our contribution this week. God, we love you. We thank you. Sing your son's name, we pray. Amen. And then, uh, guys, also I wanted to mention uh, the contribution. We're not going to actually have our ushers uh, collect it. So as you're walking out, you can just drop your contribution off with the ushers on the way out. We are going to stand and sing one more song before Janice comes and preaches the word. Wait in the water, wait in the water, children, wait in the water, oh, God's gonna trouble the water, wait in the water, wait in the water, wait in the children, wait in the Water children, oh. God's gonna trouble the water. Wait, 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 God's gonna trouble the water. God's gonna trouble the water. Look the people that pose his God's gonna trouble the water. God's going to trouble the water. They look like disciples of Christ. God's going to trouble the water. Way, 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 Way. God's gonna trouble the water. And I looked over yonder and oh, what did I see? God's gonna trouble the water. And I saw all the God's angels coming for me. God's gonna trouble the water. If you don't believe, I've been redeemed. God's gonna trouble the water. Then follow me down to the Jordan Street. God's gonna trouble the water. Way, 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 way. Way, God's gonna trouble the 
want to give you an update about how the International Churches of Christ are responding to the coronavirus. Obviously, there's no way we could discuss every church in every country, but here's a few things we thought you should know. As of the filming of this video, China and Italy are the two countries with the highest number of coronavirus cases. Disciples Today published this message from our brothers and sisters in China. Up to now, we are grateful that there are no cases of our disciples in China, mainland China, Hong Kong, Taiwan, and Macau, being affected personally. On March 10th, Disciples Today published this message from the church in Milan, Italy. We've gone three weeks without meeting altogether, and going forward, we may not even be allowed to leave our homes. Up to now, we've yet to have any of our brothers and sisters here test positive for the virus. Though some are in self-quarantine, all schools and universities are closed, and most are working from home. We also want to give you an update about the World Discipleship Summit in Orlando, Florida. The conference planners are monitoring the crisis, and they understand that many other conferences from other groups have already been canceled or postponed. But on March 12th, they announced that the WDS conference is still scheduled to happen this July as planned. However, they remain open to the idea of canceling as things develop. Here's what they said. We have no way of knowing what the health and travel landscape will look like in the next three to four months, but we remain hopeful that this time will allow for more significant containment of COVID-19, as well as a greater restoration of peace in a world now gripped with fear over this issue. We cannot advise you whether or not to cancel your plans at this juncture. Each of you can make that decision. On our end, we have substantially reduced cancellation fees and delayed registration increases to try to lessen the burden of this decision. We are writing it out and long to see the hand of God intervene and make his name great through this unprecedented series of events. So please pray that God will continue to protect and bless the disciples all around the world. Pray that churches will know what to do and pray for the organizers of the World Discipleship Summit. Zach and I understand that soon many churches may begin holding their regular weekly events in small groups rather than as a large congregation in a public area. We also understand that disciples may want access to spiritual materials that they can use and talk about together each week. So here at the Kidogo YouTube channel, we want to make videos each week to help meet this need. As it would happen, we were already planning on releasing a spiritual movie made by disciples on March 31st. It's actually a documentary 
called Finding Guy. It tells a story of how a gay man left his life of homosexuality behind after he found Jesus. It's high quality, fun, and full of spiritual principles. We are grateful to be able to serve during this time. And we hope that thousands of disciples will watch this movie and the other spiritual videos on our channel. Finally, April 19th is Global Communications Day for the International Churches of Christ. It's a day to get informed about the various ways to stay connected in this digital age. We'll make a video with all the details. Just please show it to your church on April 19th. Much love. God bless. Amen. We are uh, certainly living in a unique time, right? But uh, I appreciate that update because it's clear that God can do good in any circumstance. God is not bound to what we think is good or, or what we, you know, just our own mind frame of things. God is so much bigger than anything we can conceive or imagine. Amen. There's been some great news here. I, I, I heard we had a great women's night yesterday. Uh, so uh, women, gosh, you guys worked so hard. My wife was just so just proud and she just couldn't. She came home just so energized and, and uh, grateful for the service of all the sisters yesterday. And I know it was an amazing event. I heard the panel was hilarious. I heard Miss Joanne was hilarious, uh, which I didn't know she was a comedian, but amen. Uh, but no, it's you know, awesome stuff, guys. So grateful for the ways that you guys work together to, to you know, serve our community. So awesome job, sisters. Come on. Uh, we want to welcome those online this morning. What's up, family? Seeing me through this weird camera in front of me. Um, so we want to ask uh, everyone today to kind of uh, lessen talking. I know we like to talk during service, even when I'm talking. We just like to talk. And, but apparently our mic currently picks up everything. And we're going to work on making this better so y'all can get back to hollering at me as much as you guys would like. Uh, but uh, this is a, a work in progress. This is, a, like I said, unique time. And uh, we're doing some different things to accommodate the, the necessary things that are going on. Uh, I want to lift up the sound crew, yes. Daniel Smith, Shannon Sylvie, Steven Sylvie. Uh, these guys are amazing. They're like the Keebler elves, man. You put them to work and things just happen. Um, so, yeah, you guys are great. Also good to have the Philip and Holly back in town. See them up there singing. Some original Como family. Welcome back home, guys, as always. Good. We had lunch with Philip. On uh, it was that Thursday. It's good to you know talk about life and see how they're doing in Dallas. So welcome back home. Uh, let's go ahead and say a prayer. Amen. God, uh, we're grateful, God, that we get to uh, be together this morning. Uh, we're grateful, Father, that we get to uh, think about you. We get to to pray to you. We get to sing together. Um, and, and ultimately, God, we get to ask you to to work miracles, um, to make yourself known, God, to. Uh, may it have your will be done as well, God. And your will truly is beyond us. Uh, that was helpful for me, God, to hear Philip pray that before we uh, had our pre-worship meeting this morning. You know, may your will be done. Um, your will is 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 good. It's 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 faithful when we're not faithful, God. We can trust it. We can trust your will, Lord. And uh, I just think about man, they didn't trust you. <laughs> no one trusted you when you wanted to say when you said I'm going to go to the cross. And uh, and, you know, everyone was was doubting you and saying, why do you need to do that? And and um, and you had to do it. You knew you had to do it because that was the will and your will. And um, it was for our own good. And so I pray that uh, as we kind of navigate the situation uh, of COVID-19, God, that we can trust your will. We can trust your protection. We can trust your love and that we can trust your path for us. We can trust um, the pattern that you've the pattern doesn't change. God of discipleship, the pattern of what it means to follow you. Um, does not change in the midst of all this, God. So help us to be faithful to what you've set out for us, God. We love you. We pray in your name, Jesus. Amen. Um, so interestingly enough, this past Friday, I feel like when everything really started picking up, it was uh, the 14th anniversary of my baptism. And uh, so it was, it was a Monday night in 2006. I still remember like it was yesterday. Good old Twin Lakes. Uh, back before we had a church building or a baptistry. And for whatever reason, None of you guys told me that we've baptized people in horse troughs before. So I don't know why I ended up at Twin Lakes um, and it was freezing. And uh, but regardless, I made Jesus Lord that day. And, um, and I'm, I'm grateful for that. Uh, but normally I, I take a good chunk of my spiritual birthdays or my birthdays to spend lots of time praying and reflecting. Uh, we'll, we'll probably go back to Twin Lakes and I live down the street from it now. And um, but I didn't, I didn't get to do that on Friday. Uh, so I was busy making phone calls, trading texts, 
uh, with different church leaders, uh, even a registered nurse at MU at the hotline about what to do for today and about what to do moving forward. Because, you know, in these times like this, the Bible says get input and get advice, seek wisdom from as many avenues and resources as possible. And we're not going to be done with seeking input from here. We're going to continue to seek input um, from from wise professionals and and, and spiritual men and women uh, that, that will help us navigate this time. But obviously, this is a different type of day, right? And uh, of course, here we are between all the input and taking time to pray. Here we are this morning. Uh, and honestly, I was I was discouraged Friday. Um, we had our staff meeting at, at, at the house and I was just like, man, like classes are canceled. You know, I, I like being on campus. I like sharing my faith and, and, and talking to people about God. Um, and that's not going to happen. I like going to the rec center and playing basketball, uh, even though, you know, 33. I, I still like doing that. I'm like, what am I going to do with my life if I can't play basketball? What's going to happen? I can't watch basketball. This is insane. Like, I can't even watch it. Like, am I supposed to play video games again? Like, this is just a, a complete regression of my life here. And um, I, I've just felt like, you know, I didn't get to celebrate what God has done in my life because of the concerns over COVID-19, which is understandable. I we have you have to make those phone calls, right? You have to talk to people. You have to do your due diligence and do your research. But, you know, a few moments brightened up my day that Friday and it gave me some perspective. Similar to what, what Kyle said, you remember what's important in life. And uh, when I got home Friday night um, from campus, me and, and, and Nate Schrader were, were studying the Bible with a young man there. I, I got back and I texted the two men that helped me became helped me become a Christian 14 years ago to thank them for sharing the gospel with me. And uh, as we reminisced over texts about different things, well, we reminisced a little bit on how Kevin Bamber, before he became a Christian, used to wear nothing but basketball shorts, a plastic bag for a shirt, and a sombrero. That was his uniform every day on campus. Um, that's before he became a Christian, that's how he rolled. Um, and we laughed about that. I, and I, I felt some real joy for the first time that day. As I thought about the men God used to change my life, who they were before they became Christians and who they were after and how they were able to help me. It was truly a miracle. <laughs> Kevin said, yeah, life was a train wreck before Jesus. Walking around with a plastic bag for a T-shirt. Yes, it probably was, Kevin. I'm glad you <laughs> made Jesus Lord and helped me out. Amen. Because my life was a train wreck, too. Then I sat down and had dinner with my wife. She Made some, you know, you know, just just made some amazing food. She made a German chocolate cake. Uh, I was like, man, this is great, you know, to celebrate my 14th birthday, right? And I thought about my daughter sleeping in her nursery, and I thought to myself, wow, you know, man, God has blessed me with amazing people in my life. He gave me spiritual brothers that love me, a wife that loves me, a kid that I think loves me. Uh, <laughs> Depending on the moment. I know she does, but sometimes I don't think. I was like, ah, ah, like, okay. COVID-19 has, you know, maybe changed everything it feels like sometimes. But one thing it will not change is the love that we feel from God through one another. And how, how God has designed that to be the process in a lot of ways to feel his love is through his people. First Corinthians teaches us that love never fails. God's love for us never fails, and our love for one another never fails. Let's turn our Bibles to John chapter 13 today. And today, we have two points on how even in a health crisis like today, disciples of Jesus can and will still change the world because of our one another God-given relationships. Doesn't matter the situation. Honestly, if you read the book of Acts, the crazier it got, the closer the first disciples came together and the more powerful their witness became. Trial only made their witness stronger because they stayed close together. How this morning is we're entrusted with one another. 
We're entrusted with one another. And before we read this section today, um, just a little background here. Judas had just left the Last Supper to betray Jesus. A lot of us know that scene, right? In verse 27, Jesus flat out tells Judas, right? Hey, what you're about to do, go ahead and do it quickly. And you guys, you know, some of you guys you know, know the different gospels and the different gospel accounts, how confused the disciples were. Like, what's he talking about? Is he buying more bread or what? What's Judas about to do? I know he's got the money. And so you're like, what, what, what is he going to do? What is he talking about? They were in a state of confusion, right? Then Jesus shares with them these words in chapter 13, verse 31. John 13, verse 31. When he was gone, speaking about Judas, Jesus said, now the son of man is glorified and God is glorified in him. If God's glorified in him, God will glorify the son in himself and will glorify him at once. My children, I will be with you only a little longer. You will look for me. And just as I told the Jews, so I tell you now where I am going, you cannot come. First point this morning, if you want to take care of one another, is we got to realize is that our confusion is God's glory. Our confusion is to the glory of God. Can you imagine the state of mental chaos that the disciples were in when they heard this statement by Jesus? Because you just add on the fact that right before this, right, Judas just left. And now Jesus is saying, yeah, man, I, I, I'm going to be gone here in a few days. And we already know that the disciples were not super fans of this theory that their Messiah would have to die. They either played dumb or they were actually dumb or they just said flat out, no, that can't happen. Peter tried to rebuke Jesus, right? He said, no, Lord, you'll never do that. And Jesus, you know, we know the famous words, right? Get behind me, Satan. So the confusion must have been at an all time high in this moment. The disciples were scared. They were shocked. They were confused. It freaked Peter out so much, right? If you, if, you, if you look down at verse 36, right? He's like, Lord, where are you going? Even though he just told him, where I'm going, you can't come. P Peter's like, no, 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 seriously, where are you going? You can't leave us. Sometimes we can feel that way, right? Especially in situations like this, maybe not us, but the world around us. Jesus, where are you? Where you been? Maybe some people have been, maybe he ain't been here for a while. Everyone was in this scene was scared, shocked, confused, but Jesus was not. As soon as Judas left, what did Jesus say? Now I get to be glorified. Now, literally, as one of my closest friends is betraying me, this is my finest hour. Now is when I get to do what I was born to do. The confusion of the disciples was actually a big part of Jesus' glory. Jesus was basically telling the disciples, hey, I know I'm leaving and I know it's going to be hard. I know it's going to be challenging. But this, this is the moment I get to show you how much I really love you. If Judas never left, and I never had to take on that cross. You never know that I would literally give you my life. Without this confusion, without this trial, you never know. You have no idea how much I actually care about you. There's nothing like trial. There's nothing like chaos that reminds us of how small we are and how big God's love is. How big God's love has to be if we're going to get through it. There's nothing like having no clue about what's next to force us to our knees and beg God for direction. There's nothing like confusion to remind us of how much we need Jesus. Uh, I think confusion reveals that there's gaps in our logic and that there's gaps in our hearts. The mass confusion right around this whole thing shows us that as a human race, as much as we think we've smartened up and evolved, we got all this technology, right? We still got holes. We still got gaps all over our logic and all over our hearts. 
We don't have it together as much as we think we do. As advanced and as smart and as accomplished as we think we are. There are still things that these types of situations remind us that we have absolutely no control over. And we, you know, that's the thing. That's, that's why we can struggle as disciples, because we think we have control. That's exactly when we start to fail in our faith. Because we start putting our faith in what we do instead of what God wants to do. And I think when life is proceeding as normal, right, when when toilet paper is in great supply, as Kyle's talking about, and, you know, all, ramen is, is as common as anything else. I think logically we know we don't have control over much, right? We tell ourselves that, yeah, you know, God's in control. We have the song about Jesus take the wheel, right? We say all these little nice anecdotes to, to remind ourselves in a logical level that we have no control. But we don't, we, we feel in control, don't we? And sometimes it takes moments like today where we absolutely feel in our hearts we have no control. Where we feel powerless, confused, scared. I believe that it is in these moments where it's easier for us to relate to these disciples that we're reading about. The uncertainty as a collective people we may feel today has similarities to the uncertainty the disciples felt that night in the upper room. Here's the thing. In that upper room, we also saw Jesus ready for his glory. When it felt like the darkest hour for the disciples was when Jesus knew, hey, my time is about to be here. Watch me go to work. So when you think everything's down, guess what? I'm about to change everything. So I think something I think I, I, I feel like we have to maybe internalize from this is that, you know what? It's OK. If we as a group of people, as a group of disciples, feel a little uncertain this morning. It's perfectly normal. All right. It's OK if you're at home today and we're not sure how any of this stuff's going to play out. Right. How long do we have to live stream? I don't know. Some of y'all want to live stream anyway, right? So I'm like, we might do, we may always have it up there anyway. Amen. How long until things go back to normal, right? How long until the spread of this thing stops? How long? And if that's not the question you have, maybe you had other questions. How long? We all have how long questions. When is this going to end? When is that going to end? When is this going to be different? I think what we're going through right now is maybe a macrocosm of the, the micro things we feel on a daily basis to test it's a bigger picture of the thing of the ways that we wrestle with God on a smaller scale well it feels you know it's big to us small to the rest of the universe but the things we wait on right are a big deal to us in all those situations big or just individual Jesus said hey when it's confusing this is actually when I get the glory this is what I'm built for, to help you make sense of confusion. And I love Jesus because he doesn't teach us. He doesn't just say, I got it. He also says, you know what? I'm going to show you how you can literally be a part of this, how you can take my hand and we can work together and make a difference. Amen. Through John 13, verse 34. Let's see how we can play our part. We know this passage well. But it's a good reminder in a time like this. Verse 34, a new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Second point, first point, right, is our confusion is God's glory. Second point is simple. Our community is God's glory. Our family is God's glory. Our friendships, our relationships is God's glory. Jesus is telling his best friends right here, guys, I got to do what I got to do. So because I got to do what I got to do, I'm going to leave each of you with one last command before I go. And that's this. Just love each other the way I've loved you. Because if you do that, 
The world's going to know that you're mine. That we walked together. That you walked with me. The world's going to know who my people really are. You're going to stand out. The world's going to see who really loves when it's really, really hard to love. If you love each other and stay close, especially in it when it's confusing, especially when Judas just walked out here and he's about to do who knows what. If you can stay together through everything that just happened and everything that's going to happen, the world's going to see that I'm the Messiah. And they will follow me. Jesus is telling them, hey, your love for each other is ultimately going to be my witness that I was the real deal. Jesus could have done it any other way, right? He could have done, he could have said all the signs. And the Jews, the, the Pharisees, where's the sign? Where's the sign? Just go, I'll show you a sign. It'll be after I'm gone. And you're not going to see it in me physically. You're going to see it in my followers. You're going to see it in how they love each other. And if that's not enough for you, you don't want to be in heaven because all heaven is is a bunch of hugs and high fives and, 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 and celebrating Jesus. A dear friend, Vince, you say it all the time, right? Why would you want to go to heaven if you don't want to talk about God? That's all heaven is, right? God, God, God all the time. So what's Jesus saying? I'm telling you in this moment, when you're scared, when you're confused, when you need direction, that the next right thing to do is to love another disciple. I was watching Frozen 2 the other day with my wife, and I like that. The next right thing. That's cool, man. These Disney movies get deeper and deeper, man. I was like, I feel like I'm like reading a philosophy book right now, you know? Like, what? But that's, that's what we can do when the chips are down. It's simple. Let's love other people. Our community. Our family, our friendships in and especially outside this building and especially in situations like today. That is when this community can bring glory to God. When the world can see a group of people still laughing, smiling and being there for each other. Even if we can't hug and they can tell it's just weird for us because we can't hug. Oh, we were here this morning. You know, and it was just like, oh, what are we going to do? You know, I think Rob Ditto was like, put your hands in your pockets. I was like, OK, all right. Hey, hey. Yeah, I want to hug you. I can't. The sound guys figured out the, the, the you know, that thing. And I just, I just wanted to, like, hug Steven. I'm like, huh? Yeah. I, can't, I don't know what to do with myself, you know. People should see that in us. That we don't know how to respond because there's this love that we've that God has allowed us to build up, and it, we'd have no place to put it physically, so it comes out in different ways, maybe weird ways, but amen, right? But when the world can see that kind of love, that's when He gets the glory. So in this unique situation we find ourselves in, where more people are working from home, right? where college classes are canceled, where people want to isolate themselves, and understandably so, right? When people really don't want to love, will we still love? Will disciples still love? Will we still meet in one another's homes and share a meal? Will we, will we make time to call each other and check up on each other? Especially if some of us now, due to circumstances, have the extra time to make a phone call. Something my wife shared that was convicting because she's friends with the couple that leads the church in Milan. You know, Milan's on lockdown. But uh, she's got a friendship with the book holes who, who lead the church there. They believe that the church there is closer now than they were before the virus hit. Just because things are out of our control doesn't mean we've lost our power to love each other. With God, every church in the kingdom of God can be stronger than before this outbreak. With God, this church can be stronger than before this outbreak. You know, I pray, I'm faithful that God's moving right now. Amen? We're praying. Everybody's praying. 
Okay. God hears. He's on the job. He knows what's going on. He, he ain't like, you know, confused. But even if it's not his will to answer our prayers in this way that we would like, because we know that sometimes he has better answers. He's after what's best, right? Not what's decent, not halfway good, what's best. And Lord knows if he would have answered the halfway good things I would have prayed for, I never would have got the best things in my life. So if he decides to, you know, play the long game, or you know, it, the long game could be a variety of different things, right? One way or another, we are still entrusted with one another. Regardless, God's command to love other people does not change based on circumstance. His, his will also doesn't change. His ability to give us joy when we follow that command, that also does not change based on circumstance. If we can be happy just by being with each other in a time like this, whether virtually or physically, how much more do you think it will impact someone who doesn't have the family that we have? People who don't have the kingdom of God. Guys, you know, now is the time to invite maybe the friend you've been meeting to invite over for dinner. Now is the time. You do what you got to do. Wash your hands for sure. Use sanitizer. Give them sanitizer. Squirt them, you know, spray them down before they come in. You know, all that stuff, man. Do, do whatever you feel you got to do, right? If they sick, you know, hey, man, let's cancel. You know, we'll figure it out. I'll, I'll, I'll spray you down next time you come over. I got you. But now is the time to do, though, have those conversations. Now is the time to ask that friend you've been meaning to talk to, to study the Bible. Now is the time to love. Now is the time to share who God is. You know, we have God, guys. <laughs> if we're disciples, we have him. You know, someone taught me how to have a quiet time even when I don't want to. Not everyone has that. Not everyone has had men in their life to be like, dude, just because you don't feel like it doesn't mean you shouldn't do it. I had many men in my life. My wife does that to me all the time about a variety of things. Ah, I want to get up. Baby's up. She don't have to say anything. Just be quiet. I'm like, okay, I'll get up. <laughs> ah, at this point, it's just I could just feel it, you know. I'm just gonna get up. Yep. But I, I, not everybody has that, right? So I get up, have my quiet time this morning. I'm reading this book, uh, awesome book on parenting, sacred parenting. Uh, I know some of our parents are reading that, reading it. And uh, the chapter that I was finishing before all this happened was joy. I'm like, man, I gotta find joy. In, the, in all the little things about parenting, right? Even when your kid's crying and they won't sleep and you can't sleep, you got to find joy. I'm like, joy. And then I'm reading it today. And, you know, and last time I read the book, this is before they canceled everything. I'm reading like, oh, man, how am I, I going to find joy now, you know? I finish it because somehow I was at the end of the chapter. The next chapter is about how parenting forces you to face your fear. I'm like, well, okay, Jesus. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Because I think that's what's that's the challenge now is faith or fear, right? Wouldn't happen if someone didn't teach me to read my Bible or read something spiritual when you don't feel like it. <laughs> we have that, right? Now is the time to make that phone call to that brother or sister when you don't feel like it, because. Jesus knows we, we all certainly might have the time nowadays. Now is the time to love like Jesus loved. Now is the time to invite who over, whoever over. Now is the time to ask that coworker, that friend, what can I pray for? Now is the time not just to strengthen our family, but to spread God's family. If all this seems challenging, if it seems just challenging to be a disciple known by your love, my question is, are you being a disciple in this moment? Are you reading the words of Jesus? Because that, that's what gives us the strength to be disciples, is to read about the guy who disciples us. Are you praying frequently, fervently in such a time as this? Are you on your knees? Are you fasting for strength to still love, to still give your heart? Because if we don't do the disciplines that Jesus did, there's no way we're going to love the way Jesus did. It's like trying to 
you know, a, you know, you've never practiced ice skating before. And all of a sudden you think you can go to the Olympics and start doing, you know, those pirouettes and stuff. Like, there's no way you can do that. Like, I know I can't skate. There's no way I think I, all of a sudden I could do that. It's the same thing, guys. These are the disciplines that strengthen the family of Jesus so that they can spread the love of Jesus to others. As this community can bring glory to God. And it can give, honestly, ourselves direction. And it's time when we need direction a lot. When in doubt, love somebody. Call somebody. Text somebody. Feed somebody. Because even in the confusion, God can and will still get the glory. We can remember these things. I believe we will honor God and his decision to entrust us with one another. Amen? This time I'm going to ask Jeremy and Cheryl Job, Anita Hardin, and then Chao Wei Young to lead us in prayer for everything that, you know, it's just a situation, right? And then Chao Wei is going to close us out with one final song after we pray. Amen? Amen. Uh, does anybody feel um, a normal amount of stress right now? Quite a bit of anxiety day to day, right? An interesting fact, fact of life. God, God gave you air, right? Surrounds us. It goes everywhere we go. We, we can't escape air, correct? Take a minute right now. Take as deep a breath as you can and watch your body relax. God gave you a natural built-in stress reliever, anxiety preventer. So as we pray, just keep breathing. <laughs> we'll pray for you. We'll pray for us. We'll go to God together. Amen? Amen. God, thank you so much for today. Thank you for who you are. Uh, God, you are a God of control. You're a God of order. You are powerful. And I'm so grateful that we serve that God. I do pray so much at this time for those that can't be here uh, for one reason or another. I do pray for those that are uh, maybe more immunocompromised. I pray for those that, uh, you know, we come in contact with every day. I was just thinking about this, God, and I, I just pray that we'll just do the right thing no matter where we are, God, that we'll take care of one another, that we'll uh, serve one another, that we'll think about one another in our daily actions. And, um, you know, even if that does mean, you know, cleaning our hands more and sanitizing things more, whatever that might be, God. But I do pray that at this time, in this place, that you will really help us to find peace in you, to find comfort in your hands, to find um, joy through this time. And God, even to draw closer to one another. It is true that, you know, I think even in being in New England, sometimes I felt like blizzards were great times to draw closer to one another. It just forced us to stay in and to be with each other. And um, I feel like in some ways you just, you stop the world so that we will recognize that we need you <laughs> and we need one another, God. And so I pray that we won't miss that opportunity. We won't miss the, the chances that you're trying to give to us to really draw closer to you. But I love you, God. And I thank you as we continue to pray. Thank you, Father, for this time to pray. I know that you can do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine. Today, I pray that you give healing to the sick and comfort to the anxious. God, your word says, to do, so do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. God, help us to cling to your words today. Help us to remember your promises during times of trials. God, I just pray that, uh, that we just continue to remember who you are and whose we are, God. I love you and I thank you. Dear me, Father, uh, in this time of uncertainty, I pray for us not to be fearful. Because I know that, um, you know, when we're fearful, we do a lot of things that we normally wouldn't do. You know, we do we, we do a lot of things that are unreasonable uh, because of our fear, uh, because of our emotions. Uh, but we know that uh, because of you, we don't have to be fearful. In, in fact, I pray that we will replace that with love. You know, I, I know that a lot of times we say, hey, don't do this and don't do that. And that is the first thing that we do. 
So I pray that we would replace that with something else. Replace it with love. Replace it with peace. Replace it with kindness. Replace it with, um, you know, just uh, the good things that you want us to have. Good thoughts, you know, positive thoughts, and, and really a trust in you, God. We love you, Father. Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. All right. Very, 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 could please stand? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, sorry. I'll finish with praying. <laughs> so we thought I prayed out loud with my eyes open. God, as, uh, as we continue to pray, uh, God, you are... Um, you're you're the God of all things good, um, and uh, and that doesn't stop in the midst of uh, our fear, our angst, uh, our discomfort. Um, that only increases with all of those things, or in all those things, God. You only call us to come closer to you, to draw near you. Uh, the more those things happen, God, uh, um, lift up all of our hearts, God. That uh, you know, in the days to come, you know. Uh, we, uh, it's always been uncertain, you know, on this earth, like what might happen, uh, tomorrow to us, uh, but it's never been uncertain to you. And, um, God, I pray that you would help us to, uh, draw near to that, to the, to you, to that thought. Um, because, um, you know, chaos will ensue in different places. Uh, help us to have, uh, uncommon, um, faith and uncommon, um, patience and, you know, to let uh, let everything go as far as our fear and our desire to control and uh, help others draw near to you as they see us do so as well. Thank you, God, for uh, this time for us to be able to be together this morning. And um, we love you, God, and uh, pray always in Jesus name. Amen. So as you stand to sing, go ahead and stand, because since we can't hug one another, you should do this. Take your right hand and raise it. And place it over your left shoulder. Take your left hand, place it around your waist. Go ahead and hug yourself and feel hugged from God today. And we'll close with a song. Amen. All right. We'll sing our God. He is alive. Am I the only one that almost hurt myself doing that? <laughs> <laughs> He did the sky with heavenly dew and bring the world with his great might. There is a God, he is a God, in him we live and we survive. From just our God, created man, he is our God.
is a God, He is alive, and every day, and we survive. Help us our God, created He is our God. The great I am. There is a God. He is alive. In His And we survive. be dismissed here but if you'd like uh feel free to take a hymnal with you um just in case we'll notify you guys what we end up doing next week for service obviously we're kind of keeping things day to day but in case we need to do house church at any point if you want to take a hymnal so we can have a great house church next week or whenever we'll be ready amen so love you guys have a great sunday